Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum, where today we are taking the Ferrari to Ikea. Now I know Ferraris don't normally go to Ikea, we'll get to that in a moment, but if we blast back into the past, about six years ago when I bought my first Ferrari, which was the FF, I took it to Ikea to go and buy a bookcase to use to display my model cars. Now I've got a lot of model cars, and since we moved here to the Sch Museum, they've basically all been in the storage room in boxes, but they're all 1 to 18 scale replicas of these as best as possible. There are lots that I couldn't get or haven't yet completed and lots more that I need to get. But when we went to pick up some cabinets the other day, they had one left, so we bought the only one. I've just had an email notification that they're back in stock and I'm not sponsored by IKEA or anything. They just make stuff that's really useful for this. And Brad, I'm sorry for dragging you along again. It's fine. We've been to, <laughs> we've done a few IKEA runs with the G. I think we took that. We took the GC Blackstreet, didn't we? And the G Wagon yes. in one go, which was a cool trip. But it's going to be nice to take a Ferrari back over. Thing is. It is a throwback to a past video of yours. So I know what some people are going to say, which is you own a Ferrari, why are you going to Ikea and buying Ikea? But they actually make really useful stuff, especially for here. And we'll go and have a look at the cabinet in just a second. But the Lusso is by far the coolest way to buy a bookcase. V12, and if we come to the back, actually, you know, it's this shooting brake. There's a decent amount of space back here. I mean, it might also be one of the most practical cars we have currently in the garage. I think so. I don't think I held the button. There we go. Back here, you can take out the parcel shelves. We'll have to leave these behind today. But basically, yeah. you pop that out. You pop this one out. I haven't actually done this since I owned my last one, so this is... Can you remember? There we go. There we go. Uh, kind of, maybe. These fold down. The middle section folds down. The seats fold down. How do you get this out? Do you pull it? Does it have to release somewhere? Break it. Yeah, don't break it. We, we don't want to break a bit of a Ferrari. So that comes out. So we'll put these, well, we'll leave these here. Fold the seats down. Where do you do it? Here, like this. Pull that down. And the one on the other side. This is, I don't know why I didn't prepare this in advance, but hey, this is the Sch Museum. This is how we do things. And then you actually have a massive amount of space back there. That's actually a lot of room. It is. We don't need to take that with us. It's a slightly awkward shape by having the fuel tank, but I've measured this. I know we can fit in what we need. And when you've got the seats down, it sounds even better. So do you know what? Is That's this true. where we use the F1 car as this the- Ferrari storage. <laughs> Ferrari storage for the moment. Right, come in here and I'll show you what we're going for. So Ikea cabinets, well, when you're shopping for glass cabinets, it's quite hard to find things that actually work really well. And Ikea do a very good job of it fairly inexpensively. If you want to have a complete run of cabinets, with glass faces, you're going to spend a lot of money. But they make these, which are called the Detolf or Detolf cabinets, which display model cars brilliantly. And I've got a lot of model cars. So we're going to go buy a lot of these, or as many as we feel like buying today, at least. I need to point out as well, everyone was saying, go to Ikea, they'll give you screws if you're missing parts. We've been online and we have ordered the missing yes. parts that we had, so they're on their way. I think we did it in the video, didn't we? You literally just go to a website. I don't know boxes. if we showed it, so I think you that's can why say there was a missing. lot of comments. But basically, you go to the website, tell, you, tell them what you're missing with the product code numbers, and they will send it straight to your house or wherever yeah. you need it sent to. So it's super convenient. Or you can go to the shop and just pick them up. Whatever the use. So here, as you can see, Vantage Roadster and Mini and so on and so forth. Seven of the eight of those are spec matched to the cars I had. There are lots missing. Haven't had them unboxed for probably the best part of nine months now since packing them up to bring them here in the first place. But I'm looking forward to getting the other 20 or 30 models out later when we've got some cabinets for them. So this means Lusso run, not complaining about it, even though it is kind of clean and tidy at the moment and it won't be later, to Ikea to buy some of these, to come back, to unbox those. And also, by the way, didn't mention, but we had discussed the RS3 unfortunately picked up a puncture. The poor RS3. It happens. It's up on an axle stand uh, and jack at the moment. The new tire that I bought is at Whoops. They're gonna fit it up today. Tom's out picking that up. Tom will come back and we'll get that up and running again later as well. And hopefully tidy things up a little bit because all of the cars are filthy right now. The web, like, like GTR Roadster, maybe you can't quite tell in the light in here, it looks a mess. Filthy. Those two, a mess. RS3, a mess. Yaris, a mess. And everything else just needs. Is it just the four on the ramps that are clean currently? Basically. Yeah. Everything just needs tidying up. Anyway, enough rambling on. Let's hop in the Lasso. Let's get on the road to Ikea. One thing that we need to do is to, wait, let's open this properly. There we go. 
Come on, boot. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Perfect. So one thing we need to do, obviously, is to unplug the smart charger, which, by the way, even though it's a Ferrari charger, is a SeaTac charger, which is fantastic. On this car, it's that. Done. So simple. They make Don't life free. That yet, Tim. Well, we just enjoy opening and closing it, right? Yeah, we're going to have to redo it. There we Happier? go. Happier? <laughs> well, yes, I need to put my bag away. <laughs> Should we start it as well? Can we, we can, yeah. Should I shut the boot or do you want to hear it through the boot? Wait, can I do the boot with this? No, that's the fuel filler. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice, let me uh, close that for you. No, I can't close it with the button. That's fine, we'll just drive with it open, more noise. Cold start. Okay. We need to open the valve. These valves sound good and it doesn't sound bad, but it's not quite where And I've got a it. plan. Tom is going to be very happy. He won't be happy. He wants me to basically straight pipe. A bit like the uh, yeah. 812 with the Novatec exhaust. But yeah, maybe not that level. Yeah, let me swing this out and then um, we'll get ready to go. Here it comes. This thing looks amazing. Blue Potsy is a very nice colour. As you can see, it's a little bit dirty. But I think we should jump straight on the road and head over to Ikea. I tell you what, with the seats down in the back like that, this thing sounds epic. That sounds insane. <laughs> That's a good noise. I missed that in my life. This is like the ultimate daily car, truly. V12, looks amazing, Ferrari, feels luxurious, loads of space, four wheel drive. What more do you need? I mean, I wouldn't want to daily a V12, but you know. Eat, <laughs> okay, eat, fuel, eat bills. Own, fuel bills aside, fuel bills aside, because that's certainly the one weak link we could argue. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh well. It's got this. We wow. should have the seats down more often. Yeah, just drive around everywhere with the rear seats down. Or sort the exhaust and get some more noise. Yeah, the thing is, it's got super double glazing on all of the windows. That's why it's so quiet. And I remember back when the car was launched, when Ferrari originally took the covers off the GTC Fallers, so they were talking about how the climate control had got however many percent quieter because it was all about making it a comfy GT. And we're like, no, bring the noise back. But obviously not climate control noise, but... Yeah, exhaust noise. Exhaust noise. noise. Anyway. <laughs> well, this is good times in the tunnels. Massive. Crack on the upshift. <laughs> okay, enough wind noise. That's a good sound. It's a really, really good sound. What a car. Anyway, we're only a couple of minutes away now and we can finally, hopefully, they still have stock, go and find the cabinets we're looking for. If they've run out, then this <laughs> has gone very badly, but uh, fingers, oh, oh, gosh. in the road. Yeah. Yep. Fingers Just crossed. crossed. They, uh, <laughs> they have some left for us. We have made it to the famous blue and yellow of Ikea, and there was a funny time once upon a time, I don't know if you remember this, when I persuaded my friend Tom, TGE, to come here with his blue and yellow pista. I do remember that. <laughs> I remember watching that and thinking that works kind of well seeing as the car was essentially matching to the Ikea colors. It, it was it was kind of like we're, we're going somewhere and he cottoned on just before we arrived as to where we were going we do have a lift but I don't think we're gonna need it for that kind of bump no we're good perfect That's most not too bad no most of the sows do have the lift system spec and him get out this side which I don't yeah we're going this way I should probably open the door would you like me to open the door for you yeah, the only way I'm getting out of here is... <laughs> Watch your interior. Watch the lovely interior. Sabia is a very Should light colour. Head first. There we go. I don't know how you're doing this, but I'm just <laughs> making sure we don't hit the car next to us. All good? <laughs> there are pros and cons of taking a Ferrari to Ikea. Yeah, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's one of them. It worked. <laughs> Should we just go inside before we get yes. up to any more yes. crazy things? Let's go. So, oh it. Brad, <laughs> oh Brad, yes, this is what we're after. And we have stacks of them. So we need a box one and a box two. How many do you want? That's an interesting question. There are more than I thought. That's probably like 10, 11, 12 of them. Yeah. Um, How many can we fit? 
mistake. I thought they were about to tell you off. Or... <laughs> yeah, don't ride on the trolleys. Don't ride on the trolleys. Um, okay, let's get loading. Um, I feel like it's... I don't know how we're going to do this. Bag off, stack up, one and a two for everything. They're yep. quite heavy. Hold on, I want to put the camera down. Right, let's we've got this. see if we can make this work. <laughs> a two. Let's do it like this. That's a there two. That's a two. Next is, Next is a one. A one. <laughs> Good, this works. I feel I like we might have to time, do we have to time lapse this or should we just let people watch this whole thing? That's an interesting question. We need to line them up so they're easy to scan. You yes. can tell who's How done many... this before. Oh, thanks Tim. I'm... No, I mean, I literally did it a few days ago. Yes, you did, you did. <laughs> right. Four, that, is that enough? Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait, is it four or three? Four. Four, I think. Four IKEA Detolfs. Only that 35 one, kilos each. That's a, That's a lot of glass. This is where Brad's on trolley duty. I can't ride it anymore. I can't stand on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll push it like a normal person. <laughs> how oh, will, it goes the bag. How will we survive? We're going a bit wonky. Right, yeah, watch out. We're going this way somewhere. We're back at the car. Obviously, nothing changed around here. No, we were really efficient. Nice and quick. I'm not very good at opening that boot first go. No. I need to learn the technique. So. The first question is, do they fit straight in or are they going to have to... Be angled, yeah. Do you want to handle it or... Moment of truth. You do it, um, right? Well, each Hopefully. box on its own is less than 20 kilos. Oh, I just pressed the lock button in my pocket. Nice. But conscious, fragile, glass. Um, Come on. Yes, so they need to go diagonally. I'm going to have to push your seat slightly further forward, that's, I'm that's sorry fine. to say. What are you doing? I've tried to make this work, but... You tried to come in from this side. It doesn't fit, unless... Bit of angle. Success. Oh, Brad. I so, success. And that's not the only successful thing. Well, on the other hand, um, I feel like doing it by closing it manually rather than... This should work. No privacy glass on this, a few people noticed. Perfect. Yeah, done. We can slide these back as well, so they're not too yes. intrusive inside. Just and please I, don't break hard. I'm going to have to do the wiggle to get back to oh, the yeah. other side of the car. Wait, here we go. You can go back a touch. Okay? Yeah, that'll do. Oh gosh, I feel very, you're going to enjoy this. We might have to put a cut or a blur. Who so knows? you know what's really funny? My space for climbing to the other side is now taken up by a bunch of boxes in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah. We should have thought, you know what we should have done? I should have got out and you should have driven into the space. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Let's go this way. Good luck. Don't damage the seats. Carefully does it. Yep, fine. Welcome to this museum channel. If you've if you've never seen our videos before, this is what you have to deal with. Nicely done, Tim. Woo! Right. Nice. Try and climb in as well. Oh dear. Yep, that's a bit less legroom, but it's okay. We'll manage. Just about. Is the seatbelt thing going to be okay? Where is it? There it is. Perfect. The world's fastest IKEA cabinet coming right up. Pretty much. That's almost too easy. When a Ferrari is that simple to use for everything, like buying four IKEA cabinets. It's ridiculous, isn't it? When you think about it. Yeah, we have, cab we have IKEA cabinets in a Ferrari. <laughs> that shouldn't be possible. Not all that long ago, that was... God, this is a bit... Oh, you're fine. It's not that bad. You're fine. I'm just watching out for the bits of metal from that structure. Yep. Right, back to this museum now. Yeah, let's do it. Off we go then. Back onto the road. This means drive really carefully, especially yes. with these heavy glass uh, boxes. Don't break hard, please. Yeah, we'll be fine. Do not fear. We're only in a Ferrari with massive engine braking with its V12. Yes, I have noticed that. It's quite fun actually when you come to a standstill just on the engine braking with one of these, because it's really quite aggressive. In fact, if you drop from second to first high in the revs, it actually does the hazard flashing thing. I've turned that off because it frustrates me a little bit, but you're braking hard enough just on the engine that it puts on the warning for the car behind you. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's obviously a lot of braking. Is that a sculpture made from Ikea furniture? Maybe. This thing always used to fascinate me when I was younger, I'm trying to figure out what it is, and it's a football. <laughs> Looks like the one we have in, a, in this museum. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Not for much longer. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> football and cars do not go well together. So, unless you're playing car football. Unless you're playing car football. That's fair. Right. right. Yeah. Anyway, 
Let's cruise back to the barn. Just like that, we have made it back. This thing has done us very well. Somehow you can see the boxes right there in the middle, but I think for now we're gonna park it here near the office. We're gonna run into the office with our food we've just picked up, have some lunch because I'm pretty hungry and I think Tim is as well. And then we will get to unpacking and building. One, two, one, two. Yeah, I got a one. Tom, get a two. Mic check. <laughs> check, <mic> check. <laughs> DJ. Apparently we're turning into this, the drum and bass Ferrari IKEA sessions. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna come inside. Hello. Thanks for bringing the last one in, Brad. I've got, I've got a camera in my hand, Tim. <laughs> I'm on filming duties. Oh, you're waiting here as well, yeah? <laughs> nice. Take a seat. I'm not gonna go that far. Oh, I am. No. Join me, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sit gonna... down on the sofa. Working hard or hardly working? Always working hard. I'm, <laughs> at, I'm filming you. <laughs> this is hard work. I'm what, supervising what? Brad. Ah, oh, supervising. I'm making sure he's getting it right. Is he getting it right? No, you need to just... There we go. There we go. <laughs> <Thanks. Yep. laughs> if only they could see <laughs> Tom Brad's arm. <laughs> Don't do that right. again. I think we've got some IKEA packages. We haven't to, finished uh, yet. Together. Have we not? What have we got, what have we got left? Is there another one left? I don't know, okay. Oh no, that's it. We've got to like revert this. I should enough. probably take my jacket out. Now I think that is a problem we're going to have to solve. As Tim said in the collection, this is very heavily valved. And I know we're kind of used to the Novitech 812 that was hanging around and that, that was excessive, but this isn't quite enough. This is not how you're meant to open these, I'm sure. I have no idea. Well, maybe you do, but it's just not. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's clearly the top. It just hey. took a bit of effort. Um, basically, we need to unload it all, don't we? So, progress update. Progress update, indeed. It seems like we have a cabinet built. But I'm not sure we fully do, do we? We're close. It's a bit of a squeeze. It doesn't quite line up properly for some reason here. So, Brad's done it wrong. Basically, this side is probably over tight. <laughs> which isn't good when glass is involved. And meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, we've, we've sort of gone to like a factory kind of process. So this one's being finished off. I've started on the next one. You started unpacking. I, I'm unpacking the boxes and we've got, we've got this one here, which with the glass ready to go into this one. And I'm about to start the next one. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh yeah. How did you not manage that? I've got the glass. We need to lift this glass up. Because Tom didn't take the sticker off. <laughs> you're going to blame me for why you're almost shattering a bit of glass. Not shattering. I didn't see the shattered glass. I said almost. It's not even almost. I mean, it sounds like something's about to break. All hands on deck in the office. We've um, just had a video go live, which you guys would have seen fairly recently. So I'm working on that. Tom is getting the next uh, display cabinet put together. And Tim is... I believe unboxing some model cars. Watch out for glass. But yeah. There's glass. Here's a piece of glass. There's a piece of glass. Um, unboxing all of these, ready to get them loaded out. I say unboxing, it's a slow and steady and careful process to hopefully not break any. Yes, please don't break anything. Let's hope. And then we'll get them filled up in the cabinets. Cool. Well, I think we should keep cracking on and we will catch you guys when something else is built. We're loading up some models, roughly. All five of these are done though. Oh, last sticker. No, well, last three. Last three? <laughs> oh, yeah. A few more stickers. Someone was impatient and put this one back before I could get them off. Oh, yeah, there's one on the inside that. And yeah. one on the back. I'm trying to remember what. There's actually right. four stickers. Where's Door. The fourth? Oh, okay. So the basic plan is that all of these are going to go in the order that I bought the cars. And okay. I do have a bit of a list. That's how they used to be at home. I'm just going to run and cheat with my own list. Everyone is made differently. Some of these I've had to replica the real cars, you know, that's for example, the Vantage Roadster, which was actually 3D printed because they don't make a Roadster. So a 3D printed rear deck, the one series was painted. Can I suggest something? Yeah. If you wanted this to look like a convertible, you should have done the roof in the black. Cause you know, it's like the, or the that, No, but I didn't paint it, it came like that. Okay, well we so could. So it's the right colors. We could do something to it, maybe. Um, do you know what else we could do? There's actually an angle grinder over there on the tool shelf that I could just cut a bit off. <laughs> Some of them are extremely accurate in terms of plate, plates, interior specifications, the whole lot. Um, but I'm actually going to have to bounce in a minute. I'm going to have to disappear. You are, you're going. 
I've got to... Leaving us. Yeah, zip off. So I'm going to throw as many of these in randomly as I can quickly. And then I guess when I'm back next time, put them all out properly. Because Sounds like a well, You guys could do it, but I don't think you want to do it. I don't I, want to. I don't want the <laughs> We are both agreed that we are not touching any of your model cars unless you are no, here. No, because some of them are relatively valuable. They're then more oh, valuable do you know what? by the fact that they've been customised. I think we yeah. just go and move the Amalgam Senna. <laughs> I think... Go straight in for the big one. No, no. No, Tim, you're this in charge. This needs to be done. That's the wrong spec. That's not what my... No, that yours was... You're not going to clean it off. It was very close. Yours was Sepang Blue? It's a pang blue yeah. with a silver interior and a UK plate, not a German rental car plate. Yeah. Like that yes, one. okay. <laughs> Different wheels as well. But part parcel of the fun. Speaking of cars with German plates, Tim, where's the M8? I don't have an M8 model. Does he send that to space as well? Uh, we'll work it out in the future. Oh, G-Wagon. G-Wagon with the original G-Wagon plate, because it used to have the 18 before we swapped it to 63. And the 18 is? Now on the Yaris. There it is. You get super lucky and they release models in your exact specification, like the Supra and the RS6 120 year edition that I ran as a long term. So you need an RS6, uh, an RS6, an RS3 to run as a long term. We need one of them now. We need a model, yeah. We do need an RS3 model. And I think we probably need an RS5 or RS4 model as well. I appreciate we haven't got the car yet, but we need the car and then the model, because I think me and Brad both enjoyed that RS5. Yes. Uh, over here are a ton of boxes we're not going to go through right now but all the ones I still need to unpack. So there are a lot of them. Um, How many left in, in the collection are there to be customized still? Ah, uh, quite a few. Okay. That doesn't look like your car, Tim. <laughs> no, that's the wrong car. <laughs> Hence my question, <laughs> Brad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, you know. It's, it's actually a really difficult thing for people to do. What, what blue is like, that? Is that Burton blue? No, that's some, I, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> I know it says on the box, but I know, and I know it's not that, but I don't okay. know what it is. Long story short is, I'll get them all done in due course. But for now, this is going to be a madly cool cabinet. Of all of the it looks quite yeah. good already. There are at least 10, 15 I don't have of cars I've owned or own. Oh, wow. Because the stuff from the last nine months while we've been here and I haven't had anywhere to put them, I've not bought them. Yeah, true. So now I need to go and catch up on it. No, I would imagine that there are certain models that may not be released yet. Have they got the Does an STO Correct. model exist? They all come. An STO does exist. Oh, okay. Oh, coming soon. More on That's that. That's what later, I'll say. Yes, yes for now. <laughs> right, so. I need to bounce off. Thank you guys for help with this. I'm leaving you in charge of the RS3. Where are on you it. going? Well, they'll find out soon. Okay. We shall see. <laughs> Enjoy see your mystery trip. See you later. And now we join Brad at the RS3, wheel in hand, ready to pop this back on. Yeah, and we should probably explain. I know Tim briefly mentioned what happened, but we should probably explain it in a little bit more detail. Maybe, yes. So, we found a screw in the tire. We? You found a screw in the tire because you came in to collect it on a weekend when you were having a day off after I'd been using it yep. for picking up the Lusso was actually the last time I used I, it. I, I actually had a drive plan with some friends yep. who, who hadn't seen the RS3 yet and wanted to know what it was like. So I said, I'll go and grab it and I'll bring yep. this out. So you came in to get it. We just used it the day before to pick up the Lusso from central London. I'd been driving it for quite a few days and I thought, let me jump back in my car tonight. You say that, but since having the new tyres fitted, it had done 100 miles? No, 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 no. It had done a few hundred miles. Okay, the, the, two but or three hundred it miles. Done, it had done a, a fair bit of miles. It had not done many. Loads. It was yeah. still fairly new tyres. We left it here overnight. I was in editing a video. You came in to collect it all the way in just to come and grab the car. Yep. And all I heard from outside of the office was, <laughs> Brad, what have you done? And I was like, ah, what's happened? Came <laughs> out and saw a very flat tyre and a very unhappy looking Tom. So yes. yeah, a screw ended up in there. It wasn't repairable. We bought a new tyre. Took the wheel to Whoops, who once again has sorted us out, and we now have a wheel with a fresh yeah. tyre fitted. They have put that on, balanced it all up, ready for that to Look go on. Balance. And I wasn't completely out of luck because Tim was here, unfortunately, just said, take the M3. So, yeah, so you got the green one instead of the blue one. Yes, so. which I wasn't necessarily unhappy no. with. Um, anyway, we need to yeah. stop waffling because if we keep waffling, we're going to have to get maple syrup for you guys. Oh um, dear. Guys, but let's get one of those in. I don't know if we are because I may have already had one before. So if you're still watching, you're still watching. But we're going to cut here anyway and we're going to go and put Guys, the wheel I can on. only apologise for this, but let's, let's get the wheel on. Let's put the wheel on. So before we quickly get the wheel on, I've uh, realised that we've forgotten a few things. I've got the breaker bar, which obviously isn't necessarily needed, but just to loosely tighten things up. We have the bolts, locking wheel nut, etc. 
I don't have the torque wrench, so Tom, if you wouldn't mind grabbing that in a second, that'd be great. And we also need to do some research of what the torque setting for the wheel nuts are. So ah, yes. I might leave you in the hands of that. Okay, I'll, I'll let you get this, this on hand, Ty. I'll go and get a torque wrench, look up some torque settings, and we'll be back with you guys in a second. Sounds good. Okay. Here we have said torque wrench, which I'm gonna pop here, because as you guys may be able to see, the go-kart was down this end. So I figured this is the most efficient way to very quickly. Really? <laughs> I mean, it's like, a, it's like the fastest delivery drive I've ever seen. Right, now you take that off to the office, to your laptop or phone, and find out the torque settings. On it. See ya. And just like that, the wheel is back on the RS3, all torqued up as per the owner's manual. And as you can see, we've lost Brad because, well, Hello. the toys have come out to play and you can really tell that Tim's not here at the moment. Tim's left, you got the go-kart out, which admittedly you said was to it was for efficient. efficient delivery of the torque wrench. The football was me because I, I thought- I can't explain that one. Tim's gone, let's get the football back out. But <laughs> I'm not going to do an outro on the go-kart because we know what happens when I touch go-karts. Well, yes, it normally ends up in there. This go-kart, so <laughs> no one really knows that story, but we're going to leave it at that. Maybe something happened. Everybody knows you put it into a wall. Maybe it went into a wall. But there's might be a video, but we're never going to show it. Oh, that the video. brakes failed. Anyway, carrying yeah. on. Anyway, <laughs> we need to end this video before any more chaos happens. And before we keep waffling, no more maple syrup jokes. But RS3 sorted, first of all. We'll That's back done. on. Yep. We can start using it again, which is great. Well, maybe not you, because you get punches. No, I don't get punches. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. The, I was going to say the football's out, but we've already said the football's out. Just. Right, football's gone. Um, we need to talk about the GCC full or so because obviously we took this over to Ikea and essentially lived in the past. We went back to the past. You did, yes. By taking this over to Ikea, which is obviously essentially a bit of a throwback to Tim taking his old FF to Ikea, which I watched that video and thought, who on earth takes a Ferrari to Ikea? That prancing horse, they never normally are meant to be made to fit Detail cabinets. Eight of them, no, four of them, but eight boxes. But this shooting brake, the GC Full or so, the FF and things like that, are perfect for it. And I'm it sure Tom, you were the same. It. Yeah, swallowed it very well. And again, I, I watched that FF video back when he took that to Ikea and you just think, what on earth? But I mean, as we've said, it's a Ferrari estate car. It's extremely capacious and it can do these things. It's an everyday Ferrari. Well, it's kind of baller, right? Taking your, yes. taking your Ferrari to Ikea for something that you take your minivans or your estates or your SUVs to. So yes. This and here thing. we have the Ferrari bread van, as Joe Achilles would put it, or the estate car, as I would put it. Both work, I think. They all work. It is a great car, served the purpose well. We've got some lovely V12 on the way, and we made it back. The cabinets are up. We're not touching the models, as we said, because they're too delicate, and Tim would be fuming if we accidentally broke one. So I'm staying away. It's quite funny, actually, that I've got keys to every single one of the actual cars. Yes. Although that said, I still need to drive this. But yep. I've got keys to all of the actual cars, but when it comes to the 18th scale models, I don't want to go Stay near away. them. No, I agree. But I think we should pretty much end it there. It's been a busy day, lots going on once again, but I hope you guys have all enjoyed. Until next time.